Good morning. morning. Welcome to service this morning. Uh, Pastor's away, so myself and Bruce and Bo will be doing the service. So let us uh, rise and greet each other this morning. And then let us begin with our first hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hear, O Lord, and be merciful to me. O Lord, be my helper. Send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your love. The path of the righteous is like the dawn, light of dawn. Let us now make our confession to our merciful Father in heaven. O God, our Holy Father, we admit and confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you in thought and in word and in deed. Have mercy on us and forgive us, O Lord. We confess that we have not lived lives that are holy and have not shaped all our actions so that they are in accord with your commands. We confess that your love has not reached others through us in every situation. Have mercy on us and forgive us, O Lord. We confess that we have not always been defenders of the weak and helpless. Have mercy on us and forgive us, O Lord. We confess that we have not used every opportunity given us to witness to the faith that is ours and have let the devil, the world, and our sinful flesh set the agendas for our lives and actions. Upon this, your confession by the command of our Lord, know that your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who 
calls you is faithful, he will surely do it. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. <coughs> Our Lord, keep your family, the church, continually in the true faith that relying on the hope of your heavenly grace, we may ever be defended by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Let us recite our uh, February memory verse two times today. That there may be no division in the body, but members One more time. That there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. Now you are they, and the body of Christ is the numerous members of the Our Old Testament reading today comes from Isaiah, the sixth chapter. In the year that Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory, and the foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who shall go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Since you are eager for manifestations of the Spirit, strive to excel in the building up of the church. Therefore, one who speaks in a tongue should pray for the power to interpret. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. What am I to do? I will pray with my spirit, but I will pray with my mind also. I will sing praise with my spirit, but I will sing with my mind also. Otherwise, if you give thanks with your spirit, how can anyone in the position of an outsider say amen to your thanksgiving when he does not know what you are saying? Or you may be giving thanks well enough, but the other person is not being built up. I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. Nevertheless, in church, I would rather speak five words with my mind in order to instruct others than 10,000 words in a tongue. Brothers, do not be children in your thinking. Be infants in evil, but in your thinking be mature. This is the word of the Lord. And we now invite all the children up for a children's message. Good morning, everybody. You're probably all wondering why I'm up here instead of Emily, right? Emily had plans to go visit her family, but then something came up and she wasn't able to go. So instead of calling me last night and saying she could do the children's sermon, I'm doing it today. 
So my name is Lynn. Thanks, Emily. <laughs> my name is Lynn. So when I count to three, I don't know all of you. I know most of you. I want you to shout out your name, okay? Ready? One, two, three. Oh, what? I didn't hear you. Do it again. One, two, three. Co I heard Cole. Taya. Beckett. Max, I know you. And what's your name? Kyler. And Kyler. Well, today, well, first of all, how many of you like to go fishing? I love to go fishing. I'm not a very good fisherman, though. Do you, do you every year? You like to go fishing with your grandpa, too. Yeah. I don't make a very good fisherman. I don't like to put the bait on my hook. I don't like to take the fish off my hook. I don't like to eat the hook, or eat the hook, <laughs> eat the fish, clean the fish. I can't even stand the smell of fish. So I don't make a very good fisherman, but I love to fish. What are some things that we need when we go fishing? I'm going to show you some pictures here. If I can get them separated. What do we need, Kyler, to go fishing? Um, a, a fishing boat? Taya, what else do we need to go fishing? A fishing rod. I brought a fishing rod with me today. Kind of like a fishing rod, one that Bob made. What else do we need to go fishing? I can't get these apart. A bait. Sometimes we use these kind of baits, these lures, don't we? And sometimes we use... A worm. And worms. Sometimes we use worms. Sometimes we use minnows. And where do we keep all of our bait? In a in a fishing box, tackle box. And I got a tackle box. Do you, and if you catch a fish, what do you use to bring that fish in the boat with? A, a net. A net, yeah. Well, in our gospel reading today, we're gonna learn, hear a story about Jesus and Peter. Jesus was speaking to people out on the shore, and so many people wanted to get close to Jesus that he finally decided to get on a boat and go out in the water a little ways and talk to the people. And then he saw Peter and the fishermen, and he told Peter to go back out and go fishing. Well, Peter said, Jesus, we have been fishing all night, and we have not caught any fish. I don't really want to go back out and fish again. I've done that. Bob and I have gone fishing, been out there for a couple hours. We don't catch anything. And then he goes, let's go try fishing some more. And I'm like, I don't want to go fishing anymore. We just tried fishing, and we didn't catch anything. But Peter was obedient, and he went out, and he went, and back in Bible days, they didn't use fishing rods. I forgot to dump out all of my fish. There's all my fish, if somebody wants to spread those out. So they used nets, so they would put their nets, as you can see here, in the water, and Peter, and put, he went out when Jesus said again, put that net in the water. And what do you think happened? Oh, he caught a lot of fish. Yeah. So Jesus said, you no longer will we need to fish for fish. I want you to fish for people. Does that mean you go and take a net and you start fishing for people? That, counts, that seems kind of silly, doesn't it? It does. But what that means, go fishing for men and women and children, is we should tell other people about Jesus, right? So when Jesus says, let's go, tells us to be fishers of men, we are to tell people about Jesus. Okay, can everybody pray with me? Should we ask all the big people, all the, uh, the adults to pray with us as well? So repeat after me, okay? Dear Jesus, thank you for loving me. Help me tell others about Jesus. Amen.
Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the fifth chapter. On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing on Jesus to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Genesaret, and he saw two boats by the lake. But the fishermen had gone out from them and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing. But at your word, I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish and their nets were breaking. They signaled to the partners in the other boat to come help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And we now sing our next hymn, Come Follow Me, the Savior Spake. Glad to be able to be a part of your service this morning. And grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Heavenly Father, and through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who tells us the good news. Uh, and we love to tell that story of what he has done for us. Be with you all. Amen. And you may be seated. My question for you this morning is, who is the greatest t storyteller uh, that comes to your mind? Who tells that, that great story that you just want to go and, and listen to? 
For me, it was my, my grandfather. I, I loved as a child and, and even as an adult to go and just listen to the stories that he had to tell, especially of him growing up. And he told, told many stories, many things I learned what not to do. Uh, he was very mischievous, uh, got into some trouble, uh, but he, he told all of his stories with, with such emotion and, and kept you engaged. Uh, and I just loved to, to, to listen and to, to hear those, those stories. Plus, plus, he loved to tell stories, especially to anyone who would listen. But you always seem to, to learn something from those stories. And, and those stories had an effect on, on me. And so when we look at our, our gospel reading for this morning, we see that, that Jesus is, is continuing his teaching. And, and the, those teachings have an effect on people. People were amazed at his words. They were amazed at the authority that he, he spoke with. And when we look at the beginning of, of Luke's gospel, we don't hear much about what he taught, other than people were amazed at, at what he was saying and, and his teachings. But those stories, those, those teachings, changed people's lives. And, and what about you? Has the word of God, his, the teachings of God's word, have they changed your lives? So I want you to think about these, these questions. How did you learn about Jesus? When did you come to, to know who he was as your Savior? How did you come to, to know that, that your sins are forgiven because of what Christ did for you? How does Jesus calm your fears in your life? This past week, I was listening to, to one of my favorite seminary professors, and, and he was talking about the, the Old Testament reading for this morning, and, and he shared a story that is a great example of how God's Word changed him. He was sharing that when he was in fifth grade, he and his brother uh, heard about this thing that you could do where if you take ten slow breaths, and then on the 10th breath, someone comes behind you and squeezes your belly for 10 seconds. And then after 10 seconds, you, you release and that person probably would faint. And they were curious about this. They had never seen anyone faint. And they really had, had seen people do this and it had never worked. We talked about how one afternoon, he and his brother, his younger brother, and a couple of his friends uh, decided to, to try this on their own. And so his younger brother took ten slow breaths. And, and on the tenth breath, my professor grabbed his brother and, and squeezed him along the, around the belly. And they all counted to, to ten. And on the tenth, and when he heard the number ten, he released from his brother. And not expecting much, but his brother then fell. Fell to the ground like a sack of potatoes. And on his way down, he, he hit his forehead on, on the pavement, and he just laid there, still. My professor thought to himself, oh my goodness, I have just killed my brother. And what seemed like an eternity was just a few seconds, but then his brother started to move. He got up and he had a, a welt on his forehead the size of, of a tomato and was able to, to walk home. My professor, he decided to, to wait a little while before he went home. And as he was walking, he, he thought to himself, my dad is going to kill me. And, and, and I deserve it. And, and this, the guilt of what he had done just festered into him. This is exactly what Isaiah is going through in, in our text this morning. I am a lost man, a man of unclean lips. I, I dwell in the midst of unclean people. 
And now Isaiah is standing before the holy God. The professor said, this is, this is how I felt. I was a, a man who had done something terrible. And I was going to face my father. So Isaiah, too, is thinking, I, I am toast. I am a goner. How can I, a man of unclean lips and, and sin, be in front of a holy God? Then something happens to Isaiah that he doesn't expect. and His lips then are touched with a burning coal. His guilt is taken away. His sin is atoned for. The same thing happened to my professor. Thinking that, that he deserved death. A huge punishment. And, and he was punished. But his dad forgave him. His dad showed him mercy. Both Isaiah and, and my professor are given a new lease on life. Their sins are forgiven. Their guilt is taken away. And that burden of sin is no longer there. For me, this is what happens when, when I take communion. When I hear those words, take and eat, or, or take and drink, this is Christ's body, this is Christ's blood that is given and shed for you for your forgiveness. The weight of, of my sin, the stuff that I am struggling with is now gone. And it, and it rests, it's placed on Jesus. And that forgiveness that is said and, and pronounced to me, I feel. This is God's story. God's story for mankind. God knew that when we entered this world of sin, that God would provide a way to, to get rid of that. So he sent, sent Jesus to, to die for us, to, to live a life that, that he demands. But then he took the sin of not just you and I, but the whole world. Because someone had to pay the price for that sin, and that was placed on Jesus. And he all died a death that we deserve. God's story is a story of, of love and of mercy and of forgiveness. And as we know, there are so many people that, that carry the, the guilt, the, the burden of, of their past mistakes, the sin that they have committed. And they don't know what to do. But now we are given the opportunity to share the story. The best story in the world, the story about of God's love for us, the story of, of what Christ has done for us. And to place that guilt, that burden, that sin that we struggle with and place it on Jesus. And then allow him to give you that peace. To have people hear those words, your sins are forgiven. Think about what that does for you each and every Sunday when we hear those words of forgiveness. That peace that comes from Jesus' words. Now notice that, that after Isaiah in our Old Testament reading is given that forgiveness. He says, here I am. Send me. Let me go and tell what has happened to me. And the same thing with, with Peter in our gospel reading. 
After he sees that it's Jesus who has has done this miracle, this, this huge catch of fish. Peter realizes that this is a holy man, his master, and he's a sinner. He says, depart from me. But notice that Jesus calls him. He says, just, just come and, and follow me. And we're going to go tell the people, the world, about what God has done for his creation, what God is going to do through me. I'm sure this story, this story of God's love for us has changed your life. It certainly changed the disciples' lives. I'm sure it changed the people's lives who heard Jesus teach and do miracles. The story of Jesus can change so many other people's lives. That's why that, that hymn, I love to tell the story, is such a, a great hymn to sing. I love to tell the story. I love to tell the story of unseen things above, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story because I know it's true. There's nothing else can do. I love to tell the story till it will be my theme and glory to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. People love to, to hear stories. And we have a story that is true. A story that changes people's lives. And you can be that one. For we are all fishers of men. And people want to hear how the gospel has changed your life. How it's affected you. Why you every Sunday come to church. You get up early instead of sleeping in, especially on a cold winter's day, to come into God's house and to hear his story. Each one of you has been affected by the gospel of God's story in a different way. And you need to share that. You can tell them the story of what God has done in your life. How it has impacted you. And so we're reminded of that hymn. The hymn of I love to tell the story. Now let's go and tell God's story to people we come in contact with. to allow people to see how it has impacted, how it has changed us. And pray that God's story will change others' lives too. So that they can be forgiven. But most importantly, that they can join us in paradise with him. So let us go. Let us tell the story. To God be the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Would you all please stand for the Nicene Creed? I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, light of light, very God of being of, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again from the to him and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, and I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Friends in Christ, I urge you all to lift up your hearts to God and pray with me as Christ our Lord has taught us and freely promised to hear us. God, our Father in heaven, look with mercy on us, your needy children on earth, and grant us grace that your holy name be hallowed by us in all the world through the pure and true teaching of your word and the fervent love shown forth in our lives. Graciously turn from us all false doctrine and evil living whereby your precious name is blasphemed and profaned. Lord, in your mercy, May your kingdom come to us and expand. Bring all transgressors, transgressors and those who are blinded and bound in the devil's kingdom to know Jesus Christ, your son, by faith, that the number of Christians may be increased. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen us by your Holy Spirit according to your will, both in life and in death in the midst of both good and evil things, that our own wills may be crucified daily and sacrificed to your good and gracious will. Into your merciful hands, we commend those in our, this congregation for Chase, Karen, Lee, Sarah, Rodney, Roger, Dawn, Joanne, Donald, Barb, Marlis, Wendy, Tom, and all who are in need, praying for them at all times. We also lift up the family of Tammy Brandt, who passed away last week. Um, Lord, in your mercy, grant us your daily bread, preserve us from greed and selfish cares, and help us to trust in you to provide all our needs. Lord, in your mercy, forgive us our sins, as we also forgive those who sin against us, so that our hearts may be at peace and may rejoice in a good conscience before you, and that no sin may ever frighten or alarm us. Lord, in your mercy, lead us not into temptation, O Lord, but help us by your Spirit to subdue our flesh to turn from the world and its ways, and to overcome the devil with all his wiles. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, <laughs> Lord, in your mercy. And lastly, O Heavenly Father, deliver us from all evil of both body and soul, now and forever. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us so many, so much to rejoice in especially those who celebrate a birthday this week. For Tammy, Donald, 
Amy, Larry, Sadie, Megan, Bla Blaine, and Rhonda. We trust, O Lord, in your great mercy to hear and answer us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, at this time, uh, just a couple uh, reminders that the offering plates are um, placed at the back of the back of the room, and that there are um, uh, electronic giving opportunities. Uh, now we'll en enjoy an offering video. Please stand if you are able for the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now we will uh, say together our sending prayer. Lord, lay some soul upon my heart and love that soul through me. And may I ever do my part to win that soul for thee. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face shine on us and be gracious on us. The Lord look upon us with favor and grant us his peace. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the fi final hymn.
Well, I'd like to thank all of those who helped participate in today's service. I'd also like to remind you that there will be fellowship following the service, and there will be some Bible study opportunities for you. And I think Emily may have an announcement or two. I have a lot of them. All right. Um, thank you, Bruce, Bob, and Bo. Apparently, you need a B name to help with service. Um, thank you to Lynn for doing the children's message. I didn't want to ruin her plans, so that's why I didn't call her, I think. Um, all right, just a few things to let you know about youth group. We have a couple events coming up. Um, on Monday, February 21st, you're invited to join us for Great Plains Food Bank. That's a Monday, um, and you have off from school. We then, um, on the next Sunday, February 27th, are going to have an Encanto movie day. Um, so grades 3 through 12 are invited to join us for that. We'll have lunch, we'll watch the movie, and then we'll have a faith discussion after that. Our Valentine's Day dinner is coming up this Friday. If you would like to join us and have not RSVP'd, you can do that um, on the computer in the narthex. Directory photos are coming up in a few weeks on February 20th. If you haven't signed up for that, I believe there are still some spots open. We are continuing our Heart of Clay clothing drive, so if you have um, winter gear that you would like to donate, you can put that in the narthex as well. Um, just a couple more things. Our women's dinner is on Monday, February 21st. We're going to meet at JoJo's Italian in West Fargo, so you can sign up on the board for that. And finally, if your family would like to join other churches from the area at um, Andy's Tower Hills, um, you are welcome to go skiing and tubing with them. So if you'd like more information on that, let me know. That will be February 26th. So, um, oh, Bible study will start um, at 1015 in the fellowship hall. Today we're just going to have um, Lynn lead one Bible study for everyone. So join us for that. Have a blessed day.